I think I might have an open field coil here. Yeah, see, there is nothing. Absolutely nothing on there. Uh, to be 100% sure that we're not going to disassemble this for nothing. See, it's open. Oh, see, oh, oh, wait. See, that, that is, if I push the wires, then, okay, it's a huge um, resistance that I'm having, like 50 meg here, but... Uh, See, there is some corrosion here on this wire. Okay, so um, I found a small piece of corrosion here and when I rubbed it off, the wire immediately broke. Okay, um, so I have repaired here this trace. I don't know why I'm doing this, I, I'm, I think I'm crazy. But if I now measure the resistance between both ends of the coil, I get, let me see. 1 meg, so we went from 10 meg to 1 meg, so that's an improvement I guess, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I will going to find the other corrosion spots where the wire might be broken. Uh, I do see a couple here still, but if I need to fix all of those, that's going to be a nightmare. Hello everyone, welcome back to this um, adventure of the restoration of this uh, 1935 tube radio. Um, while I am waiting for the um, field coil to be rewound, um, I'm just going to start uh, restoring the rest of the speaker. Um, and first thing I'm going to do, well, I'm just going to clean this up and probably give it a uh, new layer of black paint because there is quite a bit of rust here everywhere. Um, clean off the rust and everything and then give it a new layer of paint. Uh, first thing here is removing the humbucking coil. So this over here, this circular thing, that's a coil actually, not here in the middle, that's the voice coil, but this thing, that's the humbucking coil. Yeah, so I am thinking about removing this thing. I think it's loose. Yeah, see, it's just, it sits around the voice coil. The only thing that we need to do is uh, the solder, these wires here. Now, it is important which wire is which. Um, just because you, you might think, yeah, it's a coil, uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, in this case, it does matter because it needs to be, um, yeah, connected in the correct way to cancel out the hum uh, from the field coil. So here on the left, we have a black wire. On the right, we have a brown wire. Um, so I think it's best to just take these off like this and like that and then normally this entire assembly should come off right and see now we clearly see here the voice coil and the cone um, because now yeah now it's gonna get a bit delicate <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna now clean this very carefully and then remove the paint as much as possible and uh, then I'll get back to you. I won't film it because it will take too much time um, because I, I really want to do this, uh, take my time for this and not rush it and not damage the cone which is still in perfect condition. So, Okay, um, so I removed all the paint um, with some acetone, came, came off quite easily actually um, and originally I thought it was black but see, I mean that's not black, that's green that came off. Um, it's not the same type of green that the, the chassis was painted in or that I am painting the chassis in, but it's also dark green. It's a bit more bluish, I think. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna then decide to give this um, speaker the same coat of paint that I'm giving the chassis or that I will uh, give the chassis. Um, That'll look really nice if it's the same color and since it was originally also dark green anyway um, I think it might fit. Now the next step is getting as much as the rust off as I can. Yeah, it'll take a bit of time. I'm probably not gonna get everything off but because there is rust on here I'm gonna apply a primer 
and then also the the layer of green paint now this will probably yeah mostly be um cosmetical because on the inside we also have rust and and paint which is peeling off but I, i'm not going to be able to do anything about that because i don't want to take out the cone so yeah let me just now start here working a bit on the rust get this rag out of here because i'm getting high from the acetone that i'm working with you will see me back when this will look hopefully a bit better okay yeah, Mama, i made a small mistake um i also removed the paint here from the yeah this is the cover for the field coil um and i wanted to tape this off so i could save the sticker here or the label here a bit and before i sprayed the rest of the piece the metal piece um but then yeah i taped it off <laughs> with this masking tape and see immediately part of the label came off um so you can see now as well see all these white spots is part of the label that came off um yeah so that's not great so what i did now is i first put some lacquer on there so i made a mistake of i wanted to save the label but i made the mistake of trying to mask it off before actually sealing it with lacquer um so yeah that's why i now um put some lacquer on it but i i think it's still it will still come off i think Ah, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. It's not coming off anymore. So, yeah, that's the rookie mistake of restoration, is if you want to save something and you want to mask it off, first you need to put some lacquer on it. <laughs> Otherwise, you will just take it off with your masking tape, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I can't believe I made that mistake. Just, yeah, confused, I think, didn't think it's true. So I'm just going to remove this now. See, so the, the rust and the paint are also removed from this part. Um, and I changed my mind. I'm not gonna paint it green, I am gonna paint it black because I think that the reason why it was showing up green is because that the paint was reacting with the acetone or that the primer underneath was green, but I'm quite confident that this is simply has to be black. See, if you see it here in the middle as well, it's quite clear. I, I think that it should be black, this speaker. So um, I'm gonna mask this off now again, decently. Now that it's sealed the label, or what is left of the label uh, and then we're gonna give the entire thing a primer and this one as well to stop it from rusting
Okay, um, both parts of the speaker um, have received a layer of black paint, uh, black glossy paint, and it's actually looking quite nice, I think. Um, now, this, this paint does take a while to really harden, so I'm not going to try to touch it too much because it's it still feels a bit soft. Um, there's only a couple of details here, these rivets, um, or these nails. Um, they were originally not painted um, because they were put in probably after the speaker was painted. So we're going to try to carefully remove the paint again from these nails. And uh, let's see if a fiberglass brush works for that. I have no clue if it'll work. I haven't tried this yet. Yeah. See, that works. Yeah, that actually works pretty well. I only obviously have to make sure that I don't scratch the surrounding paint. Maybe I can tape it off. Mm, no, I'm just gonna do this carefully. Okay, um, we are done here with this part um, and it's honestly looking fantastic, <laughs> even if I say it myself. Now let's have a look at this and let's see if the mask, um, the masking tape comes off decently and if it doesn't uh, tear the entire sticker off. All right. Yeah. It comes off perfectly, so that's good. Um, okay, and this doesn't look too bad, um, but I do think about trying to improve this area here a bit, but that'll be um, manual labor, I think, if I need to improve this. Um, yeah, so that'll be with um, some paint and a brush manually. Um, so I think I'm going to pick up some gold paint to fill in here these spots which are missing and then afterwards the black uh, i think it's best if you do something like this it's always best to do the coloring first and then at, all the way at the end the black edges so i'm thinking about filling everything in here with gold which is missing um and then like this part here should be black the outer rim should be black and then the lettering that'll do that i will do in a second pass um maybe a layer of lacquer in between as well um okay so i am trying to touch up here the pieces of paint that went missing due to my mistakes and also yeah what was already missing before um i picked up some golden paint um it's a bit too light in color so i, I had to darken it a bit with a tiny tad of black um, and I have now quite a good color match um, and I'm trying to touch up as much as possible here of the the yeah, golden paint. Um, the top part here has basically been done. I'm just going to continue now here with the bottom part and um, might not be perfect but it will be a heck of a lot better than this yeah all these white dots and all these white spots everywhere. Um, so when I touched up everything golden, um, then I'm going to put another layer of uh, lacquer um, on top and then we're going to do the black uh, part. Um, so let me just first now do the golden uh, background. 
See, it is actually matching quite well, and when it when it's dried, you almost cannot discern the difference in color. Um, so I'm quite pleased with this color match. Okay, so I finished the touch-up of all the gold, um, and I'm quite happy with the result. I mean, the color matching is quite good. I don't think I will be able to get it better than this. Um, not sure how it shows up on camera, but here in real life, I, I'm pleased. Um, now I'm going to let this dry. Um, and then I, I'm i not sure yet how I'm going to do the black part. I think I'm going to first put a layer of lacquer on there to just um, lock the golden <laughs> the, the golden color down. And then we're going to do the, the black part on top, I think. But first this needs to dry. Okay, so I'm finally done here, I think, with this one. Um, well, at least um, it's good enough for me. I masked off the labels and I cut around the edges just to make sure that, um, yeah, so that I can, can could easily um, and, and very nicely paint the edges. Um, and now, and then, Afterwards, I did um, airbrush the entire thing. So that means the part in the middle and the edges uh, on the outside, they were airbrushed. But then the difficult part was obviously to um, touch up all the black spots on the inside, so inside the lettering. And that was a hell of a job. Um, took me a couple of hours, I think, to get everything done. Um, it's not perfect, but it's more than good enough for what I like. Um, the hardest parts were the letters, where the letters were completely gone, like the R from Rola. I had to completely fabricate that myself. Also, on the bottom, the D um, at the, the Rola company it was also gone. Um, and then, yeah, obviously where the letters are really small, it's uh, it's also quite difficult to get them nicely done. Like the, the labeling here all the way in the bottom, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, USA, these letters are so small and some of them were completely gone that I also had to, yeah, well, also not that easy. Um, here on the left part, there is also a piece of text, but that was so badly damaged that I decided to just paint that piece um, gold instead of trying to reproduce that 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 piece of lettering again because yeah it's too small to to paint it by hand um, but I am more or less satisfied with this at least it's a hundred of times better than it was <laughs> um, now one small thing um, when cutting off here the the edge around the edges I noticed that the label started coming loose, so you can see it over here, see? Um, so it is originally a label that is on there. So if you do something similar, uh, I'd suggest you don't use the same method as I did, cutting around here and then airbrushing. I just suggest that you do the labeling around by hand because yeah, you will loosen the labels if you're not careful. Um, now the only thing that I still need to do is apply a new layer of lacquer um, as a final layer here um, and just gonna let these touch-ups dry that I did now and then we're going to apply a final layer of lacquer. Um, okay, what a job, man, man. Okay, so I received the field coil. Um, I had it rewound. I uh, found someone who could rewind it, um, shipped it to him, and he shipped it back. And um, these are the original wires. I don't think I need them anymore. Um, and he shipped it back, fully repaired. Uh, well, at least that's what it should be. <laughs> so what he did is he took off the, uh, the old wire measured the thickness, um, me measured the amount of turns and put a new coil on there. And he told me there were about 15,000 um, turns <laughs> on this coil. So that's quite impressive. Now let's see what we get here in terms of resistance. 
That's about 1.9k. That looks more like it. Uh, it's about almost 2k. 1,900. Honestly, I was expecting like 2.5, but yeah, I guess it's okay. Um, I I don't know exactly what should have been the original um, resistance, but um, at least we are not into the mega ohms <laughs> anymore. Okay, great. Now there is one thing that I'm gonna do. Uh, additionally with this coil um, and that's that I'm gonna wrap it with um, yeah some extra tape just to make sure that there will never be any moisture again that gets into the coil so you see um, for example there is some bare wiring here um, and we know that it was moisture that originally killed the coil and since these wires are so thin um, they are quite fragile and quite susceptible to moisture I plan to store the radio when it's restored in a decent environment, but you never know where it might up, where it might end up. And I hope that the repair tech that will come after me in 100 years or so <laughs> doesn't, when I am long gone, doesn't have to deal with uh, this anymore. Um, so I'm just gonna try to prevent it as much as possible. Um, never be perfect, but it's better than just leaving it uh, open. So I've got some um, self-fusing um tape here i guess that's fine for um, um it, for these kind of applications i haven't found anyone online who uses this on transformers but hey it doesn't contain any glue so i guess it's fine this is rated up to 90 degrees celsius i believe which should be okay for a coil like this um and so the idea of self-fusing wire uh, tape is if you don't know um, is you stretch it out a bit and it it really it fuses in itself so it's create it's used basically to create watertight connections for um yeah and and also isolation for electrical uh, connections so it's perfectly fine to use it um, for electrical isolation now i don't know how much i will need let me just see yeah this will be enough i guess So how do you use this? Uh, you remove the plastic part. And then you stretch it out. Not too much that it breaks, but you really need to stretch it a bit. like that and now if you're gonna apply it then it will fuse in itself and it will create a watertight um, yeah isolation um, so I'm just gonna do it like this you can also stretch it still a bit see while you are applying the, the tape um, Ah, uh, no, I don't have enough. Uh, no. <laughs> oh my god, I got like a couple of centimeters. Uh. See, it's already fusing in itself. I just need to... I think I'm gonna stretch it slightly further. See, it doesn't contain any adhesive. You can remove it and easily start over after like an hour or so or a couple of hours it is completely fused into itself and you have one it becomes like one piece of tape or rubber um, so if you then need to remove it you have to cut it off and start over again okay that's much better 
Now the only area where I can still see that moisture can get in is here. So I might also apply some something on there just to get it closed off. Okay, um, time to put everything back together. Um, and I think maybe it's the ideal moment to explain a bit uh, how an electrodynamic speaker actually works. If you already know this or you're not interested in the explanation, you can skip ahead to the actual assembly again, just by looking in the description of the video and clicking on the right um, chapter. So before I explain how it actually works, uh, let's get over a bit of terminology here. Obviously we have the output transformer, then the field coil, those are quite obvious. Then this is the called the speaker basket. You have here the voice coil. So the voice coil is the small um, coil here in the middle. See, so this is the voice coil. This around here is also a coil. It's the humbucking coil. We will come back to that later. If we turn it over, then this is called the cone of the speaker. And in the middle, you've got the spider. This thing here, this is what's holding the uh, humbucking, uh, holding the field coil onto the speaker itself. And that's often called a magnet. And this is the core which goes inside the field coil. Um, now, how does this actually work? You might know in a modern speaker, uh, modern speakers have permanent magnets. These electrodynamic speakers, they don't have permanent magnets. So a permanent magnet in a normal speaker is sitting here um, in place of the field coil. And it's permanently basically energizing the uh, the voice coil. And then when you send an audio signal into the voice coil, this um, yeah changes the voice coil's position relatively to the to the to the permanent magnet. And that causes the cone to vibrate and that creates the sound. Now it's I'm just gonna be really brief uh, with this, just that you are aware more or less how it functions. The difference here um, with an electrodynamic speaker is that you don't use a magnet or a permanent magnet. So you use an uh, electromagnetic um, coil, basically. So this is the, the field coil that we were talking about. It acts as a magnet and it sits over here. Um, and it also energizes the, the voice coil and um, yeah, really acts as a magnet. Now, the disadvantage of this is obviously that you need to put a, a constant uh, current through it or you need to energize it actively. Um, so when you turn on the radio, this um, gets energized and then starts acting as a magnet. Um, let me just, yeah, I found this nice drawing here with all the, the namings. So see, you've got here the field coil, the humbucking coil is this small ring uh, just on top of the field coil. So that's, that's this guy. Um, you have the magnet casing with the core, uh, the basket. So that's the metal framing, basically. The cone with there, the voice coil, and then the, the, card, the gasket. But here in this case, um, the gasket is not cardboard, I guess. Yeah, you have this um, foam. No, it's not foam, felt, I think. In any case, that's not that important. So I've got here the radio schematic. Um, don't mind all the coloring and the annotations. I'm just working on figuring out the exact issues with the, the schematic here, because there are quite a few. We will come back to that later. Um, you see over here, we've got the power supply with the rectifier tube. Then you have on your um, main B plus or yeah the rectified high voltage. You first got a filter cap, then the field coil. So the field coil is really here in series with the the high voltage or yeah the B plus. So that means that it will be dropping quite a bit of voltage because it's an, an here it says two to three k, but we've seen it's in our case it's one point nine k. So it's 1.9 kilo ohms. So that's quite significant. If you're talking here about a voltage of, um, I don't know, maybe 300 volts or so, we will see that later, but it's quite significant. Um, so it will drop quite a bit of voltage. Um, and so it will also get hot. At the same time, it's also used as a choke here in the power supply um, to filter even more a bit the voltage. Then we've got a second filter 
uh, capacitor and then the high voltage goes really like in a in a classical tube radio here through the um, output transformer and then to the plate of the uh, output tube so the important thing to take away from this is that the field coil is in in series with the the b plus now this creates a bit of a problem first of all well the main disadvantage is like i said heat um, it can get quite warm the, se the second problem is that um, like i said it's also used as a choke um, and we see also the filter capacitors they are only 15 microfarad so this means that this will create some hum um, because the the current that is going through here will not be completely perfectly rectified and it will since it's also acting as a as a choke and filtering the 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 ripple it will induce hum into the voice coil so that means if you don't take any measures as soon as you turn on the radio you will immediately hear a very uh, annoying 50 hertz hum in the speaker because it's directly inducing this hum uh, into the voice coil now that's what we have this humbucking coil for the humbucking coil is wired like this let me show you see so here we've got our field coil um, which is in series like you see here with the b plus so one side is going to the rectifier and the other side is going to the b plus on the plate of the output tube um, here we've got our voice coil and then the humbucking coil is what it's doing is it's wired in series with the voice coil and it picks up the hum from the field coil but in anti-phase um, compared to the voice coil so that means that it'll cancel out the hum which is induced by the uh, by the field coil but that also means that the wiring of the humbucking coil is quite important because if you wire it in the opposite way then it will act in the same phase as the as the hum in the field coil and you will yeah it will not work so you it's important that it's wired up correctly um, as you see here it's in series with the voice coil and the voice coil and the humbucking coil together they are uh, connected to the output uh, transformer um, so you see your signal pod is going like this through the humbucking coil and like that back to the output transformer if we look at that in practice here in our case you can see that what i'm saying is correct i don't know if you can easily see it um no i don't think so but the voice coil you have the wires here for the voice coil they are connected to these two taps um and then see one side of the um one wire of the voice coil is going through the to the humbucking coil and it's coming back to this tap so the idea is that you connect your um output transformer to these two connections okay um yeah that's what i wanted to say about it you can go much further into detail on how this actually works with the um, anti-phasing and the noise can the hum cancellation and all these kind of things but there are more than enough articles available online and blog posts forum posts to get you more um, info about this i will just now continue starting to reassemble um, the speaker here okay so the output transformer is already back on okay um so what I'm going to do is to make it look a bit more original is to put the uh, original sleeving or the isolation from the original leads here onto the new ones because this green plastic leads they don't really look nice I think um, so how you can do this is you snap off one side and then you can just pull out the old wire see like that and then you also have to pay attention that there is still nothing inside i'm just gonna clip off this side here to have a look because you won't be able to thread this just through it i mean you do have to remove this inner 
cloth piece of cloth as well and now you have a nice um, uh, sleeving that you can use then you just cut off this part here um, and then you should normally be able to easily thread this over the new wire Yeah, see, there it is. Like that. See, now we have these nice old um, <laughs> pieces of cloth here, and it looks much better. Okay, um, I think we are done with the speaker. Um, I mean, I have put everything back together, and I think it's, it's done. Um, and honestly, <laughs> it looks almost like new. Um, I love it. I really love how this turned out. I'm glad I went for the rewounding of the field coil and not just swapping out the speaker because yeah, the speaker was still in such a good condition, especially the cone. Um, yeah, it really it looks like new. And if you can listen carefully, see it also it doesn't rub at all. I mean I had to fiddle a bit to get this, uh, I had to, rem when I tightened it I had to um, loosen the screws again, shift a bit the the core here because it was a scratching a bit in the beginning but now it's really, it's perfect, see? Okay so I guess that's about it for this video. Um, I'm gonna put the speaker aside and then we can continue in the next video with either the chassis or the cabinet, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, since the um, speaker is now ready and the speaker, as you've seen, is part of the power supply unit and um, the chassis is almost repainted or done, I think we are quite close to getting started on the electronics because yeah, I really needed the speaker to be done before I could work on the on the electronics so um really looking forward to that so uh, i hope you are enjoying are enjoying the series and uh, um, thanks for watching and i hope you can join me in the next video take care bye bye